today Above him there's no one Jesus is the way Jesus is the way Jesus is the way Sing it again, y'all Jesus is the way One more time Jesus is the way Amen of discouragement and peace you cannot find reflections of your old past they seem to face you every day this one thing I know for sure is Jesus is the way y'all know this song sing it with me Jesus is the answer for the world today Above him there's no other Cause Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer For the world today Amen Above him there's no other Cause Jesus is the way I know you got mountains That you think you cannot climb you say your skies are dark and you think the sun won't shine. Well, in case you don't know, I'm here to tell you that the word of God is true and everything is promised. I know he will do it for you. Stand up and sing it with me now. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer For the world today Above him there's no other It's Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer, sing it again Jesus is For the world Above him there's no one Jesus is the way Jesus is the way Jesus is the way Sing it again y'all Jesus is the way One more time Jesus is the way Amen In the corners of your mind Traces of discouragement and peace you cannot find Reflections of your old past They seem to face you every day This one thing I know for sure Is Jesus is the way Y'all know this song, sing it with me Jesus is the answer for the world today. 
today above him there's no other because jesus is the way jesus is the answer for the world today amen above him there's no other because jesus is the way i know you got mountains that you think you cannot climb You say your skies are dark And you think the sun won't shine Well, in case you don't know I'm here to tell you that the word of God is true And everything is Let's pray as we begin today's service Father, in the name of Jesus Christ We thank you for the gift of life Thank you for the privilege to be in your presence this evening, Almighty Father. We call upon your presence, O Lord. We pray, Lord, for your divine visitation today. We dedicate everything on the hands of Almighty Father. We pray, Lord, for divine inspiration, Lord, Lord, and divine communication, Father. Blessed be your name forever. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us sing Him. To God be the glory. God be the glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world as he gave us his son. Who oh, he had his life and atonement for sin and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh God, in the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory, great things He has done. Let redemption, the purchase of blood To every believer, the promise of God The violence of honor, who truly believe That moment from Jesus, a pardon we seek. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord let the earth hear his voice praise the lord praise the lord let the people rejoice oh come to the father through jesus the son and give him the glory great things he has done great things he the things he has done and greater rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But here, when I am greater will be a wonder, a worship, and Jesus will sing. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory, where things He has done. We give you all the praise, we give you all the praise, you are the Lord, there is no other. We give you all the praise. We give you, we give you all the praise. We give you, we give you all the praise. You are the Lord, there is no other. Lord, we give you all the praise. We give you all the praise. Lord, we give you all the praise. You are the Lord, there is no other. We give you all the praise. We give you, we give you all the praise. We give you, we give you all the praise. You are the Lord, there is no other. Lord, we give you all the praise. 
Thank you, 
Unabudiwa Una style Jehovah Una style Kuabudiwa Una style we Una style we Una style Kuabudiwa Una style Jehovah Una style Kuabudiwa Una style Kimbilio Letu Una style Kuabudiwa Una style Jehovah Una style Kuabudiwa Una style Kimbilio Letu Una style Kuabudiwa Una style we who does tie to a booty? 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 Who does tie to a
before you receive our worship receive our thanks receive our praises visit us right now in this conference in jesus name we pray amen pastor demos hallelujah hallelujah bless god for the privilege of being part of day three of this uncommon conference god has been gracious he's been sending his word to us admonishing us teaching us inspiring us showing us uncommon truths in the word of god in the past two days and we thank god that this third day will also be uncommon because god's presence is here his servant is here by god's special grace the anointing of the holy ghost is present in the house to minister life unto us this wonderful evening so our viewers you're welcome wherever you're watching us from kindly share the video so that as many as possible can join and be blessed during this service uh welcome you from your homes um wherever you are we trust that god will minister to you in the name of jesus so at this point let god's servant our father in the faith pray for us and open this meeting and just release it to the power of the holy ghost spirit of the living god we ask that you take over let the light of god shine here because everyone that will connect to this conference begin to experience qualitative growth in the name of jesus christ we refuse to be small we refuse to be little we refuse to be dwarfs in the spirit realm holy ghost take over now let this growth be in all ramification of our lives in jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. uh so in in a way of recap the first day we handled uh the litmus test of qualitative growth things that uh, can show us that somebody has grown qualitatively and then yesterday which was day two we were looking at how to activate qualitative growth in our lives things that will cause us to grow in quality in the name of jesus that was the topic yesterday and i know that tonight an interesting topic is ahead of us for us to dig deeper into god's word and for the holy ghost to open our eyes for us to see wonderful things out of the word of god so sir what's what's ahead of us this evening <laughs> all right this evening we shall be studying on the dangers of lack of qualitative growth the dangers of lack of what are the things that happens when somebody have not grown qualitatively so those are the things we're going to be looking at the dangers of lack of qualitative growth things that are likely to go wrong if we don't grow qualitatively That's the right. reals of lack of qualitative growth so in a nutshell um how do we how would we approach it how what's like the major uh, direction the major predicament if somebody does not grow qualitatively <laughs> okay let's use a house when a house is built not with quality materials imagine you build a house with grass some um, stick from the village from mabati or iron sheets that they used um, 50 years ago <laughs> that is faded that house will look like a shrine at the beginning then one day when rain falls, ordinary rain it will turn that house to ruins so that's the risk somebody passes through when you refuse to grow qualitatively one tiny wind will bring you down one little problem will summarize you and that's why you see a lot of people they make noise at the beginning but after a while we don't hear of them anymore it's because they they didn't grow up with quality materials in them 
That's why you see, you know, at the beginning, you hear of some musicians. They shout, make noise everywhere, go to America, go to London. After a while, you don't know where they are anymore. And they are still young. That's why I say you hear some, about some preachers who may make noise like thunder, fly all over the world, shake everywhere. After a while, you wonder, where was this man? And probably when he was making that noise, he was 20 years old or 30. By the time he's 50, he's a farmer. I wonder, ah, but this guy used to be a pastor before what happened. It's because of the quality. The quality uh, of what made him up determined his durability. <laughs> so quality determines durability. So that's why we need to consider the dangers of lack of qualitative growth. When you lack it, it is very injurious. Yes, sir. Uh, so uh, as you can hear, in a nutshell, uh, lack of quality is is a sure way to fail. Sure, sir. Sure. It's a sure way that tomorrow we we'll look for you and we won't find you. I'm telling you. It's a sure way that you may be shining today, or even from a distance deceive people that uh, this person has the material, but the <laughs> test of time will reveal that the quality was not up to standard. I'm telling you. So that's that's why it's important for us to 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 carefully examine the quality and the level uh, of standard that God wants us to to operate in the material that God wants our lives to be made of. And also, I know that as we examine the dangers, our eyes will be more open for us to know if we don't take quality then that's a wrong direction for us to take. Yeah. So, sir, um, maybe just uh, looking at, at the Bible, a journey through the Bible, what are some of the biblical citations, the examples, uh, people, uh, children of God, servants of God, and people cited in the scriptures that we can draw lessons from in this uh, topic of uh, dangers? Yes. Lack of qualitative growth. There are many in the Bible, many. I'll go into them shortly. But let's welcome all those who have joined us from different parts of the world. Stanford Mutuku have joined us. The Lord bless Minister Stanford Mutuku. Philomena Dambuki. Mama, God bless you. Thank you for joining us. That's a professor. We appreciate you, ma'am. She said, To God be all the glory. Life Eternal Development Church have joined us. The Lord bless and multiply this church in the name of Jesus Christ. Sister Sarah June Mijabi have also joined us. The Lord bless Sister Sarah in Jesus' name. Robin the Zoon have also joined us. The Lord bless Robin the Zoon in Jesus' name. Pastor Osondu Ngokoro has joined us. The Lord bless Pastor Osondo right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Ofong Serekema Akang have joined us from Scotland. The Lord bless you. Thank you for joining us. Ezekiel Kelly Odongo have joined us. The Lord bless Ezekiel Odongo in Jesus' name. Dorcas Chepiatich have joined us. The Lord bless Dorcas Chepiatich in Jesus' name. Eva Chanya have joined us. The Lord bless Sister Eva in Jesus' name. Naomi Okere have joined us from Italy. The Lord bless you all the way from Europe in Jesus' name. Joy Obaseki have joined us. The Lord bless Joy Obaseki. Where is Joy watching from? Joy Obaseki. Let's know where you're watching from. I think I forgot. You said it yesterday or the other day. Um, I think it's from Europe or somewhere. The Lord bless Joy Obaseki in Jesus' name. Everyone already online now, please share the video. Share it on your page. Share it so that others can get connected and get hooked because it's time for them to hear the truth. The word of God is about to come with power. Let as many as possible be blessed in Jesus' name. God bless you. Share the video. All right. Cyrus Mutia have joined us. Cyrus Mutia. He said, I am in tonight. Cyrus Mutia, the Preyo. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Tom Maleve have joined us from Uganda. God bless Brother Tom Maleve in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay. Joy Obaseki joined us from Italy. Italy. God bless Joy Obaseki 
in Jesus' name. All right, share the video. Everyone online now, share the video. The Lord God Almighty bless you in Jesus' name. Pastor Dennis, you asked me to um, get scriptures to show um, dangers of qualitative, lack of qualitative growth. In Proverbs chapter 10, verse number 1, the Bible says, the proverb of Solomon, a wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. <laughs> uh, okay, let me leave the father and mother aspect of it, and let me just face what I'm teaching today, because that thing is loaded there. See, foolishness is a sign of lack of qualitative growth. When somebody has not grown in quality, the person ends up a fool. The Bible says the person becomes heaviness to his parents. Because he is not really a son. He is just somebody around town that came to add to the number but have not add, added to the value. When somebody refuses to grow qualitatively, you add to number, you don't add to value. You are around. You are, you are, you are one of those. You are, you are one of the, the, the number. The, you know, uh, uh, one of those that can be counted but in value you weigh nothing. You only occupy space with no value. Qualitative growth makes a man very valuable. When a man has not grown in quality in some areas of life, he begins to crumble. For example, Gehazi was a servant of a man of God in the Bible and he was supposed to inherit the anointing that that man of God carried times two. That man of God was Elisha. Elisha carried the anointing on Elijah times two. So Gehazi was supposed to have like times four of what Elijah had and times two of what Elisha had. Now, he never grew up himself in the area of integrity, especially in the area of um, finances. It affected his self-esteem, self-worth, and how he behaved to the extent that he became a greedy man. He made a shipwreck of his ministry. By going to collect offering from a church, somebody who came, uh, Naaman, Naaman came to visit Elisha, and Elisha cured him of leprosy, and they brought an offering. And Elisha deemed it not fit to collect that offering. But do you know that Gehazi ran after that man and collected the offering? And by the time he returned home, he collected leprosy and joined it. His ministry ended suddenly. Why? Because he, he did not grow qualitatively in character to know when to uh, collect presents and when not to. He never understood what it means to delay gratification. Uh, the Bible says he ran after Naaman and told a lie and collected presents from Naaman. And that present made him and his generation to be baptized with leprosy. Why? Integrity. He never grew qualitatively in that area. Now, in fact, when I get into the teaching, I'll talk more about that guy because he's a major example that many of us should learn from, especially in the dangers of lack of qualitative growth. Again, Solomon grew up with all the exposures and greatness of his father. He messed up in an area where he never grew up qualitatively. He did not grow up qualitatively in the area of handling sexual matters, marital issues. That was why he had a thousand women to himself. Imagine somebody having a thousand women. He will live a short life, of course. He can't live long because every day is running after one lady. Every day another lady. Every day. He won't even have time to use all the wisdom God gave him because... Um, sexual matters occupy time. So the guy, <laughs> the guy will just be here occupied. <laughs> the guy will just give himself, he gave himself an assignment that God didn't give him. Until he ruined himself. He started serving idol. Things he preached against, he started going after it. Why? Lack of qualitative growth in that area. Gave him quantitative wives. <laughs> 1,000. Ah, that guy, it is well. Imagine you have 1,000 members in the church. That church is a big church. Solomon's members were women. And they were all his wives. He was their pastor. You know, when I was in university, I went to certain university to preach. Um, somebody said to me that, um, that Solomon's church the name should be called Chapel of His Babes. <laughs> 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 <laughs 
chapel of his babes because all of them are ladies. One thousand. Ah. Why he never grew up qualitatively to be able to handle such. Again, look at somebody like Judas Iscariot who lived with Jesus physically. All of us are serving Christ now. We, are, we didn't live with Jesus physically. We love Jesus. We serve him. But this guy was the person carrying the money of Jesus. What a privilege. But he never grew up qualitatively in the area of character. And that affected him. That is why he, he hung himself. Many people like that. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 15 verse number 20. Proverbs 15 verse 20 says, A wise son maketh a glad father. But a foolish man despised his mother. Proverbs 17 verse number 25, the Bible says, Proverbs 17 verse 25 says, A foolish son is a grief to his father and bitterness to her that bear him. When you refuse to grow qualitatively, it means you are a fool. Lack of qualitative growth makes a man a fool. No matter what you have. The Bible says to us, He is a grief to his father and bitterness to his mother. Proverbs chapter 19 verse 13, the Bible says, A foolish son is the calamity of his father and contentious and the contentious contentious of a wife are a continual dropping my emphasis is the calamity side a foolish son is the calamity of his father he would destroy everything his father ever ever lived for proverbs 17 verse 21 the bible says he that begetted a fool doeth it to his sorrow and the father of a fool had no joy Proverbs 17, 21. Project it, please. Proverbs chapter number 17, verse 21. He that begetted a fool doeth it to his sorrow. And the father of a fool had no joy. Can I have other versions of the Bible? The father of a fool. I refuse to be the father of a fool. In the name of Jesus Christ. It says, a man fathers a fool to his own sorrow. The father of a fool have no joy. Ah, another version again. He who sires a fool does so to his sorrow. And the father of a fool has no joy. Another version of the Bible, please. To have a fool for a son brings grief. There is no joy for the father of a fool. That is true. Another version of the Bible again, please. It is painful to be the parent of a fool. I'm telling you, very painful. There is no joy for the father of a rebel. Another version again, please. He says, the one who begets a fool gets trouble. The parent of a fool has no joy. That is correct. Another version again, please. Whoso is begetting a fool had affliction for it. Yea, the father of a fool rejoiced not. That's the truth. Any other version again? He says, he who has an unwise son gets sorrow for himself. And the father of a foolish son has no joy. We reject such in Jesus' name. May God make us father of the wise. Message verse 1 says, Having a fool for a child is misery. It's no fun being the parent of an of a dot or an idiot. <laughs> I'm telling you, he who becomes the parent of a self-confident fool does it to his sorrow. And the father of an empty-headed fool has no joy. <laughs> when somebody refuses to grow qualitative, the person becomes an empty-headed fellow. Message verse of God, the person an idiot, becomes an idiot, a fool. May God help us not to be fools in the name of Jesus Christ. That is why we ought to grow qualitatively. Not just quantitatively, not just chronologically. Grow qualitatively. Add value to your life. Let your life matter. Many times you see people die at the age of 70. When they die, people say, eh, thank you, Jesus. He has finally died. Why? Because his life has no quality. He has no value anywhere. He, and he died at 70. He lived very long. People are thanking God he died. They just pack him up somewhere and bury him. But you see somebody die at the age of 35 and people are crying because he lived a quality life the few days he lived on earth. See, it is not, you know, how far, but how well. It's not how far you've gone, but how well you've gone. I keep saying, whenever people ask you how old are you, they are asking you what value have you added. Because when you tell them how old you are, immediately they will check your life to check and calculate whether your life has been meaningful and weighty on earth or it has been an empty life. 
Oh, glory to Jesus. So when people ask you, how old are you? They are trying to know what you have achieved on earth. It could be, it could be a greeting or a good question and also a very bad question. Depending on what you have achieved. If you have achieved nothing, it is trying to weigh you to make you understand that you have been useless on earth. <laughs> See, duration is less valuable than donation. <laughs> what you have donated on earth matters a lot than the duration you've been on earth. It is better to be a Jesus than to be a Methuselah. <laughs> No, truly, sir. It's better to be a Jesus than to be a Methuselah. The Bible says that the name of Jesus, every knee bows. Methuselah was many times older than Jesus. In fact, if you put Jesus' age into Methuselah, you will get plenty of Jesus' age inside Methuselah and there will be change left. But the name of Methuselah cannot do anything, sir. At the name of Methuselah, demons will be playing with you. <laughs> No, seriously. And the name of Methuselah, the sickness will increase. But the name of Jesus, every knee bows. That's what they call qualities. Sir. When you mention Jesus, demons tremble. When you mention Methuselah, the devils will ask you, what, where is it in the register? You know why? Because the impact was not too much. But the impact of Jesus for 35 years shook the whole world, changed the calendar of the world from B.C. to A.D. One person, sir. One man riot squad. He changed the calendar of the whole world. Today, we are here because of him. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, impact is better, is greater than just being around. May God help us to make impact in Jesus' name. So it takes qualitative growth to make impact. With qualitative growth, your life will be impactless. Hallelujah. Praise God. I think I've answered your question, sir. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> some, some deep insights coming there. Yes, sir. And we give God praise that donation is much better, is weightier than duration. I'm telling you. And uh, that was, has been brought out clearly from the life of Jesus and the life of Methuselah. Jesus was around for just 33 and a half years. Methuselah, I think, 969 yes and yet there was no impact and then we've also picked that uh for us to be impactful we need to grow qualitative qualitative yes we need to grow in quality the quality of what we're giving the quality of what we're producing hallelujah praise god uh so maybe a few more people have joined us we could have yes, yes. okay Sister Eva joined us. God bless Sister Eva. All right. Sister Helen joined us. God bless Sister Helen. God bless you seriously in Jesus' name. Oh, Pastor Dakbo. Oh, Larry, what you from Scotland also joined us. God bless Pastor Dakbo. Thank you for joining us in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Um, so, progressing on the dangers of lack of qualitative growth um sir maybe now we get to the details of the dangers yes sir the perils what happens to uh, a person or even an institution or an organization or even a country that refuses to grow in quality thank you yes. let me get into the meat of this discussion sir if you look around there are nations that existed before others and today there's nothing to write home about them for example when uh, singapore got their independence nigeria donated money to them because singapore was very poor in those days i remember when malaysia disconnected from singapore the leader of singapore cried because the uh, leader of malaysia thought he was punishing them for disconnecting from them thinking that they were going to be poor and impoverished Many nations send money to Singapore to help Singapore. But today, Singapore is the, third, is the first world nation. I've been to Singapore twice. I met the ambassador of Nigeria in Singapore. I had meetings with him. I had meetings with Singaporeans. And we, you know, presently you see a lot of Singaporeans watching me from around the world. Now, the truth is this. Singapore became a first world country because 
the countries that were donating to them refused to grow qualitatively. Singapore became better than such countries. When you get to Singapore, you will not find sand on the road. Everything is paved. All roads are paved. All buildings are tall, fantastic. And you wonder what happened to the nation that used to dash Singapore money before. The difference is qualitative growth. Sir, Singapore grew and came out. Singapore is like America. It's like London. It can compete with any country, sir. The light does not go. Everything works there. Everything works. Singapore became so blessed that they are now blessing other nations. Why? Because of qualitative growth. Now, coming back to ourselves, let me pick the dangers one after the other. Number one, the first danger of lack of qualitative growth is sudden destructions. Sudden destruction. You can make the volume a bit louder because of the rain. Sudden destruction. When you have not grown in quality, when you have not grown in quality, you can experience sudden destruction. What do I mean by that? When storm comes, be, uh, don't make it uh, begin to echo. When storm comes, that storm can bring you down. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27. Matthew chapter number 7, verse 24 to verse 27. The Bible says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the flood came, and the wind blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Verse 26. And everyone that heareth these sins of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the flood came, and the wind blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell and great was the fall of it that is sudden destruction everybody passes through the storm both those who grew and those who refuse to grow but after the storm we will know those who grew and those who never grew because one will be standing the other will be flat on the floor sir the bible says this house fell and great was the fall Proverbs 29 verse number 1. The Bible says in Proverbs 29 verse 1. He that being often reproved. Hath detected his neck. Shall suddenly be destroyed. And that destruction will be without remedy. The destruction will be without remedy sir. So sudden destruction. You see somebody who is shining today. Because he doesn't have substance in him. When attack comes on him. When the storms of life hit him. By the time the storm is over, we can't find him anymore. You know, somebody sang and said, The storm is over, storm is over now. I see the sunshine. Some people, when the storm is over, they, can, they are not even around to see the sunshine. <laughs> because the storm has swept them away since they were not strong. Qualitative growth makes you very strong to the extent that you can weather and withstand the storm. And the storm bows to you. For example, have you seen palm tree before? Palm tree. When wind and storms come, palm tree doesn't fight back. What it does is it will bow. It will bow like this. All the leaves will bow. All the uh, branches will bow. It will just be shaking like this. It will be greeting the storm. Storm, you are welcome. Uh, storm, I bow before you. All that trees will stand firm like this. And what does the storm do? Break them. Many of them fall down from the roots. The storm will uproot them and put them flat on the floor. After the storm, you see the palm tree resurrect again and stand straight. The palm tree is wiser than them. It knows how to handle storm. And then if you check the root, the roots are deep and many other fibrous roots are holding it. That is why palm tree can live for 100 years or more. Other trees just collapse. Why? Because they do not know how to handle the storm. When you have qualitative growth, tap roots down deep, Fibrous root supporting you, very strong. The storm bows to you. At the end of the storm, you will still be around. Hallelujah. Number two, the second thing that, uh, second danger of lack of qualitative growth is calamities. Calamities. Calamities are 
bad things, bad problems that make somebody ashamed. Calamities. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 24 to 33. Proverbs 1, 24 to 33, the Bible says, Because I have called and ye refuse. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have set at naught all my counsel and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. Ah, because you refuse to accept what God is telling you. You refuse to hear quality discretions. You refuse to imbibe wisdom that can help you. When calamity comes, God said, I will laugh at you. I will make jest of you. I, I will just look at you and say, what is wrong with this one? The Bible says, it's a mock when your fear comes. Everybody has a fearful time. When you are not made up of good stuff or strong quality stuff, when your fear comes, you bow, you, bow, you, you go down. Because everybody passes through fear, sir. There are fearful times in this life that when it comes to you and you, don't, and you are not strong, you bow, sir. Uh -uh. If you remember well, when my wife got pregnant and was about to give birth to a baby, a week to delivery, the doctor gave her an injection and the baby died. It was a bad moment for us. But I took it with courage and boldness. And I came back to church the same day. And I prayed for everybody in church that what I suffered, they will never suffer it. And I asked God to give me compensation and God gave me a son. Many people began to see something. Somebody sent a message to me and said, we heard that you have raised the dead before. How come you could not raise your own baby? And you say you are a great preacher. You go everywhere around the world preaching, praying for other people. Now, your own baby has died. And we stood on those storm and I'm still preaching to you today. And I will never stop preaching, sir. Remember the storm you passed through during your own time, Pastor Dennis? When the baby was born, I traveled. Believing everything was fine. I even named the baby. We were very happy. Not knowing that the devil was going to strike. The devil struck and shook everybody in this church, sir. Shook us. But we stood our grounds that the baby is one of the finest human beings in this church today. Why? We were able to weather that storm. What if you were not strong enough? What if your wife could not stay in the hospital and she also chickened out? What if her spiritual stamina could not withstand that attack? Black men would have started. Ah, he sacrificed his baby. Eh, that is why they are not having money. All kinds of talks would have happened. But God helped us to weather the storm. Why? Because we were prepared for adversity. Excuse me, sir. You see, everybody will pass through adversity, sir. Excuse me, ma. Everybody will pass through adversity. You need to be strong in your inner man, in your spirit man, to weather that storm and pass through adversity and silence the devil. Or else the devil will make a jest of you. Calamity will come, sir. But when you are made up of a strong substance, you will always withstand it. Proverbs 24, verse number 22. The Bible says in Proverbs 24, 22, For their calamity shall rise suddenly, and who know where the ruin of them both. I'm telling you, calamity rises suddenly. If you are not strong enough to withstand, aye, many things will just go wrong. Proverbs 24, verse number 22 says, yes, shall rise suddenly. Number three, the third thing, the third peril, the third danger of lack of qualitative growth is disappointments. There are two sides to this disappointment, sir. You will be a disappointment to others and people will also disappoint you. When they come close and discover that you are, you are, you are a sugar cane. <laughs> they thought you were a tree. When they came close, you were a sugar cane. <laughs> they just dropped you somewhere. I'm telling you, they just wonder what, eh? When they see you from afar, they think you are solid. When they come close, they discover that you are Iggy Ekwere. Child. They will disappoint you immediately. You see them disconnect from you. That is what happens when you are not made of quality substance. People will get disappointed. Imagine you pray for somebody to be delivered from a demonic attack and then you come back disfigured by the same demon. Disfigured by the same demon. How would they not bring cases to you? They will know you are made up of very useless substance. You are made up of stubborn you are made up of grass. You are not strong at all. Hallelujah. Praise God. Disappointments. Yes, sir. You wanted to say something, sir? Uh, on, on the point of disappointment. Yes, sir. I, I remember the story of Jesus and the fig tree. Okay. When he looked it from afar, I'm it, telling it was you. so promising. 
In fact, uh, <laughs> if he was hungry, the Bible says he was hungry. Very hungry. You were licking. In fact, he had maybe begun Thanksgiving. I'm telling you, son, I've eaten. <laughs> that uh, I've been hungry for a few hours now, but ah, ah, the way at that tree is a fruitful tree. My answers are my prayers are answered. answered. <laughs> but when he got there, the Bible says that he found only leaves. Leaves. There no was quality. nothing edible. Shy. Wow. May may God may God give us substance. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says he caused the tree. <laughs> and declare that from henceforth nobody will eat from that tree anymore. The Bible says the tree dried up instantly. Oh, glory to Jesus. It will never be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Every child of God should endeavor to grow in quality. Quality shows in your character. Quality shows in your behavior. Quality shows in your ability to withstand criticisms, ability to withstand the test of time, ability to withstand attacks. You know, the other day I was teaching on attacks, and I talked about customized attack. Customized attack is the attack that is only customized for you only. For example, what happened to your baby did not happen to my baby. It was customized to frustrate you. But at the end, you fought it. See, when you are not strong enough to face such situations, you will bring embarrassment. You will be a disappointment to God. And people will be disappointed at you. Because when people look at you, they clap for you. They believe that you are a great person, very strong Christian. And then when they come close, they discover that you are, you are, you are sugar cane. <laughs> Hallelujah. Imagine you are building sugar cane. You, you try to put decking in your house and the, the wood you got was sugar cane. You are joking. The building will go down. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 15 verse number 22. Proverbs 15 22 says, Without counsel, purposes are disappointed. But in the multitude of counselors, they are, they are established. Counsel is necessary. Counsel makes you a solid person. When you are open to counsel, you become very strong spiritually, very strong financially. You see, many people wonder how I move in, the, in this nation, being a foreigner, but settled down here and I'm growing. I follow counsel. I ask people that matter, people that know what I should do, people that have been around before me to give me counsel. When you refuse quality counsel, your purpose will be disappointed. That's what the Bible says. You will not be established. Lack of quality counsel makes a man not to be established. Again, the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 5 to 10. 1 Samuel, I want to show you disappointments. 1 Samuel 16, 5 to 10. I am come to sacrifice on the Lord. Sanctify yourself and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointing is before him. But the Lord said to, unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the, in the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him to pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither had the Lord chosen this. Verse 9. Then Jesse made Shammah to pass by. And he said, Neither had the Lord chosen this. Verse 10. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord had not chosen this. Why? No quality. They don't have the quality God was looking for. Seven of them. They were disappointed because they were disappointment. No quality makes you a disappointment and then you'll be disappointed yourself. Imagine how early I'm going to bounce, you know, to the end that went somewhere. Somewhere believe this must be the king. Look at the way he's even walking like a king. His chest is broad like a king's chest. <laughs> but God said, no, mm -mm. this one doesn't have the quality I'm looking for. Have you noticed that in some gatherings, when you look around, you select men by their qualities. You select people by their qualities. Many times, you see people that look very fantastic, but they are empty barrels. Quality makes you appointed 
lack of qualitative growth makes you a disappointment and also you'll be disappointed hallelujah praise god let's go a little bit more in psalm 17 verse 13 the bible says arise O lord disappoint him cast him down deliver my soul from the wicked which which is thy sword disappoint him when you are not somebody that has quality inside you you are you have not grown up with qualitative character you'll be disappointed by god himself look at the way all of them were lining up to be king and god said no i don't want them god disappointed them in job chapter 5 verse 12 the bible says he disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hand cannot perform their enterprise see the word of god see many times when people are not quality human beings they are crafty and god himself disappoints them when they cook up appointments and swell up god will arrange them to fail why because they refuse to grow up everyone watching me today it's better for you to grow as a christian and be a quality christian a christian that god can re rely on a christian that god can depend upon many years ago when i was in nigeria as i was growing up i kept on praying and fasting until one day god told me that they wanted me to deal with campus courtism in nigeria it was a difficult task for me i went into 40 days fasting god said i have put in you all it takes to deal with the matter go there and serve me you are a god that was when that word came alive in me you are a god and god's told me protection i saw it in my bible ye are gods the message version said you are god's deputy hallelujah praise god and i went to the campuses as a god and god honored his word in my life i did close to 40 crusades and campus courtesan died in nigeria hallelujah praise god when i moved from campus to campus god decided to now move me from country to country why because i fulfilled that assignment when i came into kenya and things were a bit tough i wanted to run god said to me hey stand there i am putting you the tenacity to to reign in this nation and that's why you see me reigning here sir he said i'm putting you what it takes to move this nation forward if you leave i will bring somebody else but you have disappointed me ah that's why i'm here sir till now of course you knew when i wanted to leave man because things were not the way it should be and i said to myself if i invest half of the grace i invest here if i invest half of it in nigeria i'll prosper sir. in south africa i'll prosper god said hey the last year man there are still remnants here what i put in you is enough to handle the nation and that's why i'm here prospering here sir the journey has not been easy but god said whatever this nation needs is inside me and that's why you see me stand and when i speak i speak with audacity and authority excuse me sir if you don't have the quality that it takes you will crumble sir you will crumble so you will find yourself a disappointment to god and even a disappointment to man even to yourself so disappointments will just baptize you everywhere <laughs> why because you refuse to grow up qualitatively let's go number what four the fourth thing that happens to those who refuse to grow qualitatively is poor performance poor performance you will always perform poorly since you refuse to grow qualitatively your performance will always end up very poor you will discover that people will have high hopes for you but when you show up a fool a fool <laughs> When you're coming out, they will clap and say, hey, the great man is coming. They will shout everywhere. But when you climb up, people are like, is this all about this guy? Is there another chapter remaining? <laughs> hey. In life, it's better for people to discover you than for you to look for how to recover yourself. Discovery is better than recovery. By the time they weigh you and they cannot find you, you will need to recover your integrity. You are lost. When you show up again, you see people hissing and walking out on you. Why? The empty barrel have come back again. Quality makes you very tasty and finger licking. Everybody will love to connect with you. See, when you stand hard, you become a standard. When you cannot stand hard for quality, you will never be a standard. Nobody will pray to be like you. People will pray, Father may i never be like such and such person and may that not be us in the name of jesus christ poor performances 
the bible says in second Kings chapter 4 verse 31 to 36 that is the story of gehazi when they gave him a rod to go and lay it on the baby second Kings 4 31 to 36 the bible says he carried the rod sir and he went to the dead baby laid the rod on the baby and the baby died the more in fact the the baby dried up the more. Why? Because this man had not grown qualitatively. If he grew up qualitatively, the rod of carried the anointing. So what are you looking for? They already gave you the rod. The rod already has the anointing. So what am I looking for? Imagine somebody that passes the boy gives me his platform. The crowd is already seated. What am I looking for? I will command thunder to land immediately and begin to manifest before gehazi got to offloading point the road was already empty i'm telling you sir he laid the road on the baby the baby the baby stretched the more the road was a load <laughs> no wonder elisha had to come and start stretching himself on the baby elijah could not even use the road again because the road in fact the road had died poor performances you perform poor when you have not grown qualitatively you will be around but you never make impact again you see in first Kings chapter 18 verse 24 to 29 the bible said the prophets of baal were asked to call upon their god and elijah was to call on god the bible said the prophets of baal called from morning till evening 6 a.m to 6 p.m and their gods never showed up very poor performance and elijah stood and said hear me oh god before he finished he hear me fire came down in one minute see when you refuse to grow in quality you will permanently settle with poor performance poor performance in ministry poor performance in life poor performance in marriage Poor performance financially poor performance everywhere you go to you will always walk manifest below capacity below average below expectation what is going on here all right please let's be more serious with this stuff you will always perform below capacity below expectation poor performance poor performance all right let's go number five number five the fifth thing that happens when men have not grown qualitatively number five good beginning but bad ending good beginning but very bad ending you will begin very well begin with loud noise but end very badly end in a very bad way end in a very nasty way why because there's no quality to sustain you because there's no quality to sustain you ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse number 8 ecclesiastes 7 verse 8 the bible says better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof and the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit when you do not impart quality character inside you you will end badly and the bible expects you to end very well for better is the end than the beginning job chapter 8 verse 7 job chapter number 8 verse 7 the bible says though thy beginning was small yet your laughter and should greatly increase god expects you to increase at your latter end but do you know when you don't have quality quality stuff in you your latter end will be very bad very bad the bible says in proverbs chapter 4 verse number 18 proverbs 4 it says the path of the just is like a shining light he shining more and more Unto the perfect day when you have quality stuff in you you keep shining more and more when the stuff in you is not quality hey you will become bright today and then that tomorrow 
I need somebody around here to move this speaker away from this place. Now. I have spoken. Water is poured into it. Second Peter chapter 2 verse number 20. Second Peter chapter 2 verse number 20. The Bible says, For if after they have escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, and latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Latter end becomes worse than the beginning. Why? lack of qualitative growth that's what made them polluted when you do not grow qualitatively you'll be easily polluted easily corrupted they will bewitch you easily they will bend you to anything they want easily why because you have not grown qualitatively root chapter 3 verse 10 root chapter number 3 verse 10 the bible says and he said blessed be thou of the lord my daughter for thou hast shown more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning. In so much that thou followest no young men, whether poor or rich, you have shown a good character at the latter end than at the beginning. God wants your latter end to be wonderful. He wants your latter end to be very powerful. He wants your latter end to be very, very glorious. He wants your latter end to be very, very uncommon so the devil makes sure that people's latter end is not good why because of lack of qualitative growth because of lack of qualitative growth all right job chapter 42 verse number 12. job 42 verse number 12. the bible says so the lord blessed the latter end of job more than his beginning for 14 thousand sheep Six thousand camels and a thousand yoke of oxen and a thousand she asses. The Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. The Lord blessed the latter end. When your latter end is worse than your beginning, it's because of lack of qualitative growth. Number six. Number six. Number six colossal setbacks colossal setbacks lack of qualitative growth brings colossal setbacks setbacks that are heavy setbacks that are very dangerous for example Gehazi Gehazi that was supposed to get double portion of the anointing on Elisha got leprosy is a colossal setback to the extent that after the death of Elisha nobody could heal the sick in israel people started dying so they said that somebody died and they carried his dead body and put inside the uh, coffin of elijah and the guy got up elijah was not still raising the dead from the grave because gehazi refused to carry the anointing colossal setback colossal setback in second samuel 17 verse 23 ahitophel went and hung himself colossal setback because his counsel was not followed since he decided to betray david that's a colossal setback an oracle went to hang himself in matthew 27 verse 3 to 5 judas iscariot went to hang himself the treasurer of jesus christ himself that's a colossal setback why because he was not made of quality he betrayed jesus easily ahitophel betrayed david easily it was a colossal setback to christianity to the kingdom of god so when you refuse to grow up when you refuse to grow up in quality as a child of god you will bring the kingdom of god colossal setback even yourself your setback will be will be uh, 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 will be major around the world all right number seven number seven the seventh danger of lack of qualitative growth is shameful finishings shameful finishing you will finish shamefully 
Some people will finish, but they'll finish very shamefully. They will finish shamefully. Hallelujah, praise God. Hallelujah, praise God. Hallelujah. Shameful finishing. What is going on here? Why are the cameras not working? All right. I will want you to switch on your brains and let your brains work. That's, that's a shameful one, you know. So don't let it happen again, sir. <laughs> Let's get back to our teaching. That's what we're talking about. When quality is not put into perspective, it gives back to shameful finishing. All right? May you not finish shamefully in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May you not finish shamefully in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Look at Solomon. He finished shamefully. Why? Because he never invested in quality. He finished shamefully. Look at Esther. She was trained and she never finished. She said, if I perish, I perish. And she never perished. All right? One more point I will close for today. Number eight. The eighth thing that happens when quality is not put into perspective. When quality is not put into play is internal crisis. Internal crisis. Loss of self-esteem. Loss of self-worth. Loss of property. Loss of belongings. Loss of inheritance. Why? lack of quality growth when a man does not grow in quality he loses his inheritance look, 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 look at um, um, uh, this guy uh, Esau and Jacob why did Esau lose his birthright he didn't trade his appetite he said if I don't eat today I will die it's a lie I have not eaten for 40 days before and I'm leaving <laughs> He never trained himself. So the quality was not in him. That was why he sold his birthright for a plate of food. Not even food for his entire generation. One plate. Lack of quality training. Lack of quality growth. Lack of quality upbringing makes you disgrace God. Makes you have the internal crisis. Hunger can make you resign to faith and you submit your destiny. Hunger made that guy sell his birthright hunger sir. see internal crisis you discover that you cannot control yourself because you're not made of a quality you're not able to do things that happen to you every crisis will deal with you and wound you so seriously you lose your self-esteem imagine a man saying what will this birthright do to me please give me food take the birthright if he lost his self-esteem he lost his self-worth he, he lost his self-assurance because of food. Shy. When you don't grow up qualitatively, you lose your destiny by yourself. Nobody beat him up. He gave it up by himself. What a shame. Why? Because he never grew up qualitatively. I think I have trashed this point well. I encourage everyone hearing me. Grow up qualitatively don't just be around be impactful be strong be a strong christian don't just be hanging around may god cause you to grow qualitatively in jesus name yes sir wow we thank god for for those eight strong points just uh, as a way of recap number one was lack uh, of qualitative growth Danger number one is sudden destruction. Danger number two is calamities. Danger number three is disappointment. Danger number four is poor performance. Irrespective of the resources provided, the support provided, the time and the chance provided. It all ends in poor performance. Number five, we saw that it, uh, you start well, a good start, but with a bad ending. Yes. Number six is colossal setbacks. A setback that is major. A setback that is, that is of high magnitude. And number seven is shameful finishing. 
like the case of Solomon, started well. God testified that I love him. In fact, the Bible says that God renamed him and called him Jedida. Yes, you're right. But his ending was was shameful. Very shameful. His ending was was unpalatable. His ending was not expected because he started well. And then number eight is internal crisis, like the story of Esau. We've been uh, uh, we saw that he sold his birthright for a morsel of, food. of bread. <laughs> what a lack of understanding! I'm telling you. Internal crisis caused him to devalue what was valuable. He um, valued the food. He valued more than his destiny. What? <laughs> For many years, it will be good. <laughs> he valued the temporal Die. and sold off the permanent, the eternal. Wow. That's why we've been admonished this evening that we endeavor, we strive, we put effort, we desire, we earnestly look forward for qualitative growth. So look at, look, look at David and Saul. Let's compare the two of them. In quality, because of adversity, sure. what he passed through, the lion, the bear, the forest, the battles. But Saul was a big boy. Look at his ending. He ended in the house of a witch. <laughs> Suddenly, him, him and his, the two or three sons, two three sons, sons died in one day. Died in one day. Sudden calamity closed his chapter. He was begging for death. He begged his Amor Biara, kill me. The Amor Biara said to Fiapa, that's not my assignment. He killed himself. He put the sword in the sand and fell on it. And his enemies came to him and took him and nailed him to the wall and were celebrating on his death. What a stupid finishing. Why? He refused to grow in quality. When we fail to grow in quality, we become an example of, of, of failure. Like now, when... when Trainings and teachings are being done on failures. We're using such as examples. an example. May God help us and may grace. Look at me. David. Yes. When the son of Goliath wanted to kill him, when David was old, David still went to battle. While he was fighting, the son of Goliath, Sibekai, wanted to kill David. The Bible says one of David's cousins came to succor him and clear the son of Goliath and wounded the son of Goliath. And they told David, You will not go to war anymore. Because you are equal to like 1,000 Israelites. They say, no, 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 you are too valuable, sir. Even at old age, no, no aunt must come close. What? Qualitative growth. Qualitative growth makes you sweet at old age. Not when you are very old. Your children and grandchildren are afraid of you because you are looking like a pussycat. <laughs> when you show up, you're not, you're not very scary. Because there's no impact. When there's impact, your children and grandchildren will not want you to die. Because they know that whenever they visit you, a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars will just enter their pocket. Right. You, will, you can give them one landed property somewhere that they don't know you had. Impact! You are a quality person. You are not dry. When you open your mouth and talk to them, they are taking notes at the age of 90. Not when you are 70, you are already trembling. You are trembling. It's only demons that tremble. <laughs> I am not trembling, I am not trembling. Because I am not made in part. It will never be your portion. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Everyone watching tonight, receive grace for quality impact. Amen. You will not be an empty barrel making noise in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Quality impact everywhere you enter. Amen. When you speak, men shall listen to you. Men will not know what you say everywhere you go to. You will be the champion of the house everywhere you enter. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, your brain will download quality things. Your books will be sold forever. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Amen. you will never fade. Sir, quality growth makes us unfadeable. It makes a man unfadeable. After he leaves this world, people will still be watching his video. Look at Catherine Kuhlman. She died in 1976. Till today, people still watch his, her tape. One day, I slaughtered in her tape where she was preaching. She was, you know the way she preaches. Oh, you have been waiting for me. How many have been waiting? She pulls it in very long like that. And then she says, 
Holy Spirit of God. Move. That's where she do face like that. God came down. I was watching. While I was watching, fire was entering me. Fire. Fire was entering me. I, I was looking for the deaf to open his ears. I was looking for the blind, just watching her. Impact. Qualitative growth, sir. Remember, there was a time when she didn't have qualitative growth. That's why she married the wrong person. She came out of it and learned a permanent lesson and stood her ground. She, she died. Her, her destiny has impacted many lives on earth. Glory to Jesus. One day, I sat in my house in those days, one of the students with a lot of students, other younger students around me. And we watched Benson in the whole state. And we were watching the tape. I bought plenty of it so I can learn from that man of God. While I was watching, I stumbled on one of the tape where he raised the dead. He was right in church, like I'm in church. And they brought in a dead woman and brought the dead woman to the altar. And the ushers wanted to stop them. He said, no. Bring the dead to the church so that the dead can be raised out of the dead. And people started laughing. He said, wait, let me collect the offering. Everybody give you offering. After the offering, he said, how many of you know that this dead woman, the woman, she has died already. Believe that the woman will come back to that. People were running away. People were afraid because the woman had died for some days. He also carried water, poured on the woman and commanded the woman to get up and the woman jumped up. <laughs> the church exploded. I prayed non-stop for six hours. Asking God for that power. Asking God for grace to make impact. Asking God for the character to carry out another. Ah, this if you don't grow qualitatively, there are some anointing God will never give you because you can't carry it. See, there are vessels by which you carry acid and there are vessels by which you carry water. <laughs> some anointing are acidic and corrosive. You can't carry it in a plastic vessel. So, when you have not developed yourself to be a quality vessel unto honor, there are some anointing you can never carry. So, I began to develop myself to be tough so that I can carry heavy grace and anointing to the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. Praise God. May your life make impact at old age. May your life not be an empty life. May your life not be like foam. Foam, fuke, fuke. You know, foam like that. No weight. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I believe you have learned something today. I believe God has blessed you with the word you have had today. Start running after qualitative growth. Tomorrow I'll come from another dimension. I'll be showing you some a secret to me. In fact, I'll move to a very serious tangent that <laughs> you will wonder where I'm coming from. I will show you the secret that will make you a quality human being on earth. You have lasting impact in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Invite somebody to the conference, tell the person to come online, connect online. Apostle there, he brings the word of God all the way from Nairobi, Kenya, by the grace of God. For you to be blessed, for you to have major impact on earth in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever you are right now, I want us to give our offerings, and then I pray for you, and then we'll close the service. Whatever you are sending your offering, if you are in Kenya or in East Africa, you can use the pay bill 821 430. And Pesa pay bill, sending your offering and your tithes. Hallelujah. The church is being built right, while, right where we are. Rain is falling. That's why you had me telling them to move the speaker. Because rain is falling and the tent is leaking and we need to change the roof of the tent. Whatever you are watching me, I want you to be part of those that will change the roof. Sending your seed so we can get the roofing company to get in here and change the roof of the church. So the church can be a place where we can worship God and not be dodging from the rain. Hallelujah. Praise God. So whatever you are sending your seed, sending your offering, the account number is on the screen. Take a photograph of it and do it. If you're outside Africa, you can use send wave and then you connect it to my phone number. It will land here immediately. And what you have sent it for will be used for it. To the glory of the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. May you grow qualitatively in the name of Jesus. So go ahead. Send in your offering. I'll pray for you and pray for all our viewers. And I will leave you to start meditating on this word. And this word will do you good in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for our givers, for all those who are given their offerings, their tithes, their seeds, their sacrifices. Some are also sending in money for us to build this church. I ask, oh God, that you bless them tremendously in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let the blessings be uncommon. Let the blessings be quality. Let the blessings be explosive in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Shall men give to your bosom. Let that scripture be fulfilled in the life of everyone giving right now. 
in the name of jesus christ those who are stingy father touch their hearts and help them not to be stingy anymore thank you father in jesus name we pray lord i want to pray for everyone who have watched this broadcast today that you cause each person to start running and yearning and hungering for qualitative growth in the mighty name of jesus christ cause each person to start acquiring what makes a man qualitative or makes a woman qualitative in the mighty name of jesus christ help us to stop beating about the bush cause us to concentrate and look for what we actually need what will sustain us in the mighty name of jesus christ let the dangers we discuss today not be our portion cause us not to fall at the uh, fall prey to calamity in the mighty name of jesus christ let everyone who have had the word of god today stand firm and strong to fulfill destiny in full thank you father we know it is done in jesus name we pray amen until we come your way again tomorrow this is pastor dennis and i saying god bless you have a wonderful evening please share the video let others watch it so they can make up their mind because quality christians are scarce in our generation and we need quality christians now that is why i am doing this teaching i made up my mind to be number one quality christian and i don't know about you i know he is going to do the same all of us are going to become quality christians so quality christians wanted be one today the lord god almighty bless you see you again tomorrow on this same platform bye bye god bless you have a wonderful night bye bye